Lesson 14, 2, 3, 4 trees. This tree allows nodes to store multiple keys and to have multiple children. Each node can have 2, 3 or 4 children. The number of children is equal to the number of the contained data items plus 1. Let's have a look at the children and how to organize the children. So, all the children with keys less than A will get the leftmost position. Then, you're going to get all children with keys bigger than A but smaller than B. And then, all the keys bigger than B and smaller than C. And then, all the keys bigger than C. New nodes are inserted in leaves. If a full node is found on the path to the insertion point, that node will have to split. Splitting a non-root node. Create a new node on the right of the one to split. Move C data into the new node. Move B data to the parent node of the one being split. The two rightmost children of the node being split are connected to the new one. Splitting the root node. Create a new root that becomes the parent of the old one. Create a new node parallel to the one being split. Move C into the new node. Move B into the new root. The two rightmost children nodes of the one being split are connected to the new parallel node. Search times for this kind of trees and red-black trees are equal. In fact, while 234 trees are shorter, they also store a larger number of nodes on each level. Let's build the code. Let's execute it. Okay, show, insert, find, and exit. Let's put some value in. And voila! Every time you print, you're always going to get an example of what a typical 2343 is going to look like. So you're going to have your root with three items, and then you're going to have your level one with three items again and four children. You remember the rule that the number of children is always going to be equal to the number of items plus one, and then level two. 0, 1, and 2, with again 4 children per node and 3 items per node. So the tree contains root, which is 56. Then you have level 1, child 0, that contains 34, and child 1, that contains 78, and so on. As you can see, this algorithm doesn't show you the relationship between nodes. That's because it would be extremely difficult to build a tree using just a simple print. You're probably going to use a web interface anyway to visualize your data. So that would be just a waste of time at this stage. Um, another thing I want to show you is the fact that certain levels contain multiple child 0 and child 1. Well, that's because... Each one of these nodes is going to have its own child 0, and child 1, and so on. Let's have a look at the code. So we have that each key is going to be stored in its own object. And then the node is going to be storing array of these objects. And then down here, we're going to have that the tree is going to be managing the nodes. We've seen before this tree over here where nodes will be storing three keys and having four children. What if you need less children or less key? So all you need to do is modifying this constant over here, obviously rebuilding the code, then 
automatically the number of items will be decreasing by one and you will get as many children and as many items as you need. The class node is going to contain two arrays. The first one is going to contain pointers are children, while the second one is going to contain pointers are items. So we, we said before the items are object and children obviously are nodes, so they are also object. Also we have these properties over here, which is the counter. It increases every time we insert a new item. And then you get these useful methods over here, where these ones are to manage the num items, the number of items, and then these ones are to manage the array of child, and this one over here are to manage the array of items, and this one over here instead are to get the parent, check if the node is a leaf, and check if the node is full. And then here you get this method over here to connect a child to the current node. So you pass the child number and the actual object. So set child. Set child was this method over here where we pass the child number and the child itself. So we have the child array being updated. And then if the child exists, if the child pointing at this node, the two nodes will now be connected because remember this property over here, parent, right? So we have the current node being connected to the child. So but you might need to disconnect the child, right? So you pass the child number and then you create a pointer at the child that you are going to delete. And then in the array that store pointers are children, you set the pointer at that children to null. And then you return the temporary pointer that you create here because at this stage, the child still exists in memory, although he has been disconnected. What if you need to find a node by its key? You're going to be needing this method over here. Although you're not going to be calling this method, the tree is going to be calling this method. And we're going to see the details later on. So, you pass the key and you start cycling through the node. If the node is running out of element, you get out of the cycle. If not, then you get the key of the node and if this is the exactly the key that you're looking for, you return the index. Otherwise, you return minus one, so you couldn't find it. And then you might need to insert a new item, right? So let's see what to do. The very first thing you want to do is increasing this property over here, which is the counter for the items. So next, you start analyzing the array from the right, moving toward left. If the item is null, you move left, which means that you just found an empty spot. So you still don't know what the exact position is going to be. So if this is not null, you get the key. So if the new item is smaller, move the old item right to make some space, right? You're not inserting the new one here. You're just moving the old one. Otherwise, you just found the correct spot, you insert the new value, and you return the index of the new value. Otherwise, if this is the first item, you just insert the new item, and you return zero, which is the index of the first item. We've seen before that when we insert new nodes, we might also need to split old ones, removing the item B and C, which are also the rightmost items in the node. So we're going to be needing this method over here. So the very first thing you want to do is assuming the node is empty, so you save the item, right? Minus one, so you are getting the rightmost. 
disconnect the item by setting the pointer to null and decrease the counter, the counter we just seen before. You also want to return this stamp over here, right? Because although the item has been removed from the node, well, it still exists in memory. Display node is a very simple method that calls that method that we've seen before, display item. So, is able to display all items per each node. And finally, the class tree. So, we have the root node, we have a get and set from root, and the find method. So, as we've seen before, we have this find item method which works within a node. But we also need a find that works within a tree to find a specific node, right? So while this looks for items, this one looks for node. So we cycle through the tree and then we check all keys. And if you find the correct one, we return the child number. If not, if we bump into a leaf, so at the end of the tree, we return minus one, which means that we, we couldn't find anything. Otherwise, we move to the next children. We've seen before how to insert a key into a node, but what to do if you need to create a new node inside the tree? So, you're going to be using this one. You have a pointer at root, and then you create a new node with a new key. Then, you start cycling through the node. Now, if you bump into a full node, you're going to be split it, because according to the theory, if during the search you bump into a full node, it has to be split. Now, you get the parent and then you move to the next child. Now, if this is a leaf, you do the insert because in this kind of tree, the insert is always done at the leaf level, right? Now, this instead is neither a leaf nor a full node. So, you move lower. And now, at the end of the cycle, you finally find a correct spot to do the insert. And the split method, which is used by the insert over here. So we know that every time we split a node, we're going to be relocating item B and C. That's why we need these two pointers. And also the two rightmost children, child 2 and child 3. Right? Also, we need a pointer at the parent node, the index of item used, and regardless whether or not root is being split, item B and C have to be disconnected. Regardless whether or not root is being split, the two rightmost children have to be disconnected. So, these four objects still, still exist in memory and we can still retrieve them. Create a new node that will be used by the split. Item C will move here, regardless whether or not root has been split. If this is the root, create a new node, promote and connect it. The new root becomes the parent of the current node because it's the new root. So the old root becomes its children. Connect the new root to the old root. This is not the root, hence grab the parent of this node. Always move B up regardless whether you're working to split root or not root node. Make some more space for the new children. Move parents connection one child to the right. And this is what this cycle does. Connect new node for split to the parent, which is basically the new node that you've been created during the split. Always insert C into the new node, 
regardless whether or not you split in the root node. Connect child 2, connect child 3, and you're done. And I'm going to leave the rest of the code for you to analyze. This is a simple printout. And thank you very much for watching.